November is the month of remembrance and the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II. I'm here at the South African National Museum of Military History. And right away, I want to say thank you to Ditsong and the museum for allowing me to shoot here. And when you see some of the stuff they've got, if they wanted to, they could probably shoot back. Now, before you say, I'm not interested in war, let me take you to see something. It's not a weapon. It's so small, yet so significant. And it tells a real human story. When the Second World War broke out, South Africa was bitterly divided, for a change. And memories of the Boer War and the 1914 rebellion were still fresh, and many people were reluctant to fight for the British Empire that they saw as the real enemy. And they wanted the country to remain neutral. Now, Smuts won a narrow victory, and Parliament voted to join the war on the Allied side. But there had to be compromises. South African troops could not be conscripted to serve outside the borders of the country. So to actually fight in the war in North Africa and Italy and elsewhere, they had to volunteer. And they did. Huge numbers. Ordinary men, under-equipped, hastily trained. Imagine putting your hand up to fight the Nazi war machine at the height of its power and reach, when Britain was definitely still losing. And now here's the item that I want to show you. Amongst all these weapons and machines, up there, almost unnoticed, those little bits of red material that were worn on the shoulders of every soldier who volunteered, they marked the wearer as someone who would literally go to the ends of the earth to defeat fascism. That is the mark of real courage. South Africans of all races fought in the battles that turned the tide of the war. Uniquely, they were all volunteers, every single one. So much of the images from World War II are black and white, and those red shoulder tabs, if they can be seen at all, show up as little grey smudges, easily missed, like something that you might chuck out if you found them at the bottom of Grandad's sock drawer. But they made all the difference. I can't adequately express my respect for the soldiers who wore these little red tabs. Their images may be black and white, but their honour makes our digital megapixel Facebook group world just seem so small and grey. They say that war is the universe's way of teaching us geography because we refuse to learn the lessons any other way. And then those little bits of cloth inside, they can teach us lessons even today. If you're enjoying my journey, please like, share, subscribe. Usually I like to keep it a bit lighter, but I didn't really do comedy in this episode because I see this as a kind of sacred ground. But that doesn't mean that soldiers were always serious. Long after the war, I met a brave man who volunteered as a young soldier, who'd worn that red tab, and he had a particularly dry sense of humour. He was an infantryman in the Cape Town Highlanders, and he saw action throughout the war, including the Battle of El Alamein and the assault on Montesoli in Italy. And he was wounded more than once. And one day his old comrades told me a story about how he was reprimanded by an officer on the morning of the Battle of El Alamein for making an inappropriate joke. And the officer told him he'd be in trouble at the end of the day if he survived. And I'm damn lucky he did survive because his name was Peter Progers. He was my father.